This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Money. Ever wondered how much money we make? Well, we're gonna tell you, because this is how much money we made farming in 2022. Our farm is Red Roof Family Farm here in Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. We used to be a veggie farm that grew some flowers, but this year we made some big changes to being exclusively a flower farm, which led to a lot of success. We sell at our local farmer's market as well as from a roadside stand here on the farm. We have two and a half acres with about half an acre in cultivation and it keeps us busy with our season running from end of April till mid-October. We just finished up our fourth year and we're pretty happy with where we're at. I really love farming. I love being surrounded by the beauty of the farm and then taking that down to the farmer's markets and seeing everybody's face light up when you sell them bouquets. It's a really fun way to live your life. And I love getting to spend so much time outside, to have work right at your home so that the whole family can be involved. You know, it makes for a really nice lifestyle. We make this video every year and last year we made $35,000, which sounded pretty good until we went and we looked at our numbers and we discovered that though we may have had $35,000 worth of sales, what we actually made on the farm was negative $38,000. So we, we spent more than double of what we earned. The goal for 2022 was to not do that again. You can't be a business when you're just purely losing money. So we made some really big changes. Last year, we had an employee. It ended up costing us $18,000 in wages. So we decided no employee, just us, till we can get some of these numbers a little bit more figured out. We also completely cut out one of our biggest profits. We cut out our seedling sale. We said, no more seedlings. Sure, it's making us some money, but it's costing us way too much time. But the biggest and most important change of all is that we said no more selling things that don't make us money, which meant no more selling veggies. We decided to become a flower farm because flowers was where our money was in those previous years. And we needed to be able to make sure that all of our labor was going to be getting some sort of sales out of it. So we completely revamped the farm and sitting here, our goal for this year was to not lose money. Our goal was to like, hit zero. We wanted to have $50,000 in sales and hopefully not go over that in our spending. There's a lot of upfront costs when you're farming. So we knew that we weren't going to make money right off the bat. You know, the first three years we lost money. Fair enough, right? We have a five year plan where we want to be profitable on year five, but this was year four. And so, you know, we got to start making some progress towards being profitable. And, and so now we're going to tell you how we did towards that. This year, we had four ways that we made money here on the farm. The first one is the farmer's market, where we ended up doing $21,000. Our second most important way to make money on the farm is our roadside stand. And we did $23,000 in total sales there, which is good. very exciting. We also have a category that, you know, is a little bit of a hodgepodge, but it's special orders and wholesales, um, kind of, you know, the little bits and pieces. And there we did $5,000. And then finally, we have what we're calling Christmas, which this year was one, one market, market. <laughs> but we did $3,000 at it. And our hopes is to, you know, grow all these categories in future years. So that means in total, we did just over $52,000, which means we, we made our yeah, $50,000 goal. Flowers are quite different from veggies. And one of the things that I was really surprised about is when I broke down these numbers even more, there was an amazing amount of sales that happened in the spring. When I did a cutoff of, you know, to June, which is very early for us, we start, you know, selling kind of beginning of May, maybe a little bit in April. Um, but that's, you know, that's not much. We ended up doing $22,500 in that period. And then the summer period, which had always been the bulk of our sales as a veggie farmer, we only did 26 and a half, you know, so it, it was kind of like, 
you know, two halves of the season, um, whereas before I would have thought like a third in the spring and two thirds in yeah. the summer fall season. So, you know, for us, that's really exciting because it means that that's something we can grow. We weren't even necessarily putting the focus that we will in this coming year on the spring. We had been kind of thinking summer was going to be it. The only reason that such a strong start in the spring was possible is because we ditched the nursery sale. You know, we, we did a lot of thinking about the nursery sale. It was essentially a completely different business than all the other businesses. N you know, very little of the customers that came for the nursery sale uh, came for veggies or flowers at the rest of the season. So it kind of felt like um, we should be investing in the same customers throughout the entire season and we should just focus on, on the flowers. And, and I think that, um, you know, because we were selling like $7,000 kind of in that range at the nursery sale. So you can see the, the start that we had with just selling flowers, you know, outpaced that. And now that we know that, because we were going to markets and selling out at like 1030 in the morning, you know, we can go to the markets with enough flowers so that we can be there for the 1030 rush, right? And have lots of stock to sell through that. And there's tons of, of you know, potential. The spring sales are only gonna grow. And then finally, to break down our sales by month, uh, January till April, we did $4,500. In May, we did $7,900. In June, we did $10,000. Ching. <laughs> Ranunculus. In July, we did $9,100. In August, we did $8,300. In September, we did $5,200. In October, we did $4,000. In November, we did nothing. <laughs> nothing. And then in December, we did $3,000. We were on track to do $60,000 for this year, but we we got tired. <laughs> and because of that, our sales fizzled out a little bit at the end of the season. We ended up missing a bunch of the September markets. Um, and we also, because we were so unexpectedly busy with the flowers early on in the spring, we missed some of our important planting dates, which meant that, you know, stock was a little bit more limited in the end of the summer than we would like it to be in future years. So we made our sales goal, but sales, gross, those aren't profit. And, and so, you know, you have to take into account our expenses. And so uh, that's what we're going to do now. Our first expense is one that we haven't really had to talk about in past videos because we were a veggie farm. But now that we're a flower farm, we're selling a taxable item. And so that means that straight off the top, we need to take 10% of our gross sales and give them back as sales tax. So we had $5,200 in taxes as an expense. Even though we're selling a $20 bouquet, that's that's $20 tax included, right? So it's really more like, you know, what, an $18, $18 bouquet. And we take that into account when we are building the bouquets. Um, but I don't know if it always gets expressed. Last year, we did a massive, or I should say I did, a massive seed shop. We ended up spending over $12,000 with all of our seed and plant purchases. And so far this year, I haven't bought a single seed um, because so much of the spending was from last year. But despite that, <laughs> we have almost $18,000 in our you know seeds category because we did some really big buying this year. We bought about $10,000 worth of tulips, which you know will be sales in 2023. We also did a real big planting on peonies, which yeah. was quite pricey. We bought, you know, I have like buckets and buckets of ranunculus and anemone corms in the garage already for 2023. Um, and, you know, as I look at this category, I'm not saying to myself, oh, but it'll be less next year because, you know, I'm already looking at orders that I've put in that haven't come out of the books. Um, as we move forward, we're buying more and more um, plants or seedlings or plugs rather than, you know, seeds that we then grow into plants for ourselves. It costs more money when we do this expenses aspect of the business, but it also allows us to save money, you know, on the labor aspect of the business. So 
it's a lot of money, but it's, you know, the money spent that makes it so we can actually make money. So yeah. I was amazed when I actually broke it down by company. We spent a lot of money with our favorite companies. We ended up spending about 5,300 with Unicorn Blooms, who, you know, deserved it. That's yeah. where we got our beautiful Those peonies giant from. giant peonies. I know. And then we spent over $12,000 with Van Nort, which yet again, Not that's, your favorite? you know, that was an entire palette taller than me of tulips and bulbs. Mm -hmm. And then we spent $300 on glass. It takes money to be an official business. And so this year, you know, our office costs, like our lawyers, accountants, that type of stuff, cost $7,600. If you break that down, it was like $400 for a lawyer. Our accountant was $3,600. QuickBooks was 550. And our insurance was $3,000. Money well spent. <laughs> yep. Can't do it with any, without any of those. But I'm looking forward to future years where the percentage of it comparable to gross is yeah, a lot is lower. lower yeah. The category that really nickled and dimed us to death this year is tools slash supplies. Um, I was shocked going through the bank records, seeing like tool shop, tool shop, tool shop many many times uh, and we ended up spending eighty four hundred dollars in total some of this was you know bigger purchases that we made you know day after day so it, like i knew it was going to be high but some of this is also just money we didn't realize we were spending um so you know i'm hopeful this category you know keeps getting a little bit more under control as the as the years go on a good example is wood. <laughs> we bought wood to build a couple of raised beds for our tulips that we just planted and that cost us $315. You know, it just, it adds up fast. Our favorite uh, farming tool company, Dubois, we ended up spending uh, $1,350 with them this year. Um, which, you know, is easy to do. That's a few seedling trays and a new hoe. Um, so not surprised. Our local farm company, we spent about $1,200 with them. And yet again... I'm surprised it's that low. Yeah, like <laughs> we, we really didn't shop with them much this year. And then all the other bits and pieces was $5,500. You know, and those are a lot of like $50 purchases that just added up. Irrigation is always a big expense for us. Uh, we probably spent $20,000 on it before this year. And this year we hired a local irrigation company to come help us out a little bit. And so we spent about $4,000, $4,200 with them. And you know, like, that was money well spent because we got an operational irrigation system. You know, A lot of the previous stuff that we'd done was still usable. And then uh, they kind of like finished everything off and, and we are completely automated now. Yeah, we can go away for a weekend and have our farm be watered. Because you can't grow anything in Kelowna without irrigation. Another piece of essential equipment, which was surprisingly expensive when you look at it on paper, is we bought shade cloth for greenhouses, which led to that $10,000 June yeah. with our amazing ranunculus crops that need shade cloth, um, but it was $3,000. But, you know. You couldn't do the ranunculus where we are as well as we did with the shade cloth. Yeah. Like, it was just an essential. People would come up to me all the time at the market and be like, how do you grow these ranunculus? I keep trying. A greenhouse with shade cloth. Yeah, and they're like, don't even bother. Don't just buy them from me as a bouquet and enjoy it. And, you know, life is easy. Another big expense every year is compost, you know, it's, it's great, the stuff that we get is really amazing, uh, but it does have a price tag associated with it, and this year that price tag was $4,000, right? Not Which cheap. it was every other year yeah, too. It's not cheap, we get a lot, we have a big, you know, a big property. Another big category is, I'm calling Christmas, and this was our Christmas fair. We spent almost $600 on our fair fee, 
uh, for the weekend, which was like, ooh, yeah, was when we're investment. used to our $50 farmer's market fees. Um, but money well spent because we also made $3,000 that weekend. Um, and then as soon as I finished the craft fair, I was really excited about how it went. I'd learned a bunch and I had plans for next year. So I went out and I spent all of our profit on buying more empty ornaments. So now I have enough ornaments on hand to, you know, make enough to do $12,000 worth of sales next year. And that ended up costing me $1,800. Mm. <laughs> so in total, we did uh, over $2,500 on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do everything. So sometimes we have to bring in some help. And this year we spent about $1,800 on hired labor. You know, once again, Money well spent, helped us finish some projects that otherwise wouldn't have got done. We don't regret any, any of these expenses. Yeah. <laughs> Last year, we didn't do much Uline shopping, but that meant that we were due for a really big Uline shop this year. Um, we're set up probably for two years worth of supplies, but it cost $1,400. And then finally, the bits and pieces that it took to do seedlings was a bit over $500. Um, you know, soil, fertilizer, a few more grow lights. I'm not allowed to go into the growing store <laughs> unaccompanied, but we also tend to go there around Valentine's Day. And then yeah, I'm like, let's make it a present. <laughs> but you know, it's the one thing about this expenses category is, you know, there, you, you need to spend the money, you need to build the business and you need to buy these yeah. things. You, so. can't, you can't go to a farmer's market with $20 bouquets filled with dandelions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to sell anything, you're just wasting your time. So you have to invest in things to sell and to be able to grow those things, right? So the costs are upfront and the, you know, profits <laughs> will come in future years. <laughs> so unfortunately, that means our total spending for this year was around $57,000, which means that bum, 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 we are <laughs> minus $5,000 in the hole. Yeah. The goal was zero. We were trying really hard for zero, but yet again, uh, we made no money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. You know, like having gone over these numbers because you know, the truth is till right before we filmed this video, we weren't a hundred percent sure about these numbers. We, we did need to crunch them down to know them. Um, and I'm not sitting here feeling disappointed with the year. Yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here feeling invigorated and exciting for the year that's coming up, you know, getting so close to our goal of zero, um, feels, like yeah. really on track. We also, you know, up until, you know, kind of early summer, we were looking like we were on track to do 60,000, maybe even $70,000. We actually, it was so busy this year that we, we got burnt out. We mm -hmm. just couldn't keep up with the amount of work that we we're putting in. Um, so, you know, seeing that even with how we'd kind of let things slide, we'd still reached our goal. Um, has us really excited for next year because next year 100k or bust. Yeah, I mean we can plan for it next year, right? It's 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 easier when you see it coming We did the big switch to flowers this year and we didn't really know exactly what to suspect So, you know in some ways this is fourth year farming, but it's it was also first year flower farming and and so there was unexpected things to happen and the big the big like woohoo part for me was when June hit and we sold, you know, over $10,000 yeah. cuz that proved that we can do big numbers. And then after that, we started hitting problems with supply with um, our, you know, second plantings not really being planted in time. We ran we didn't have sunflowers, right? We we're one of our most yeah. profitable <laughs> flowers and, and we didn't have them for a it's long. It's only going to be better. It's yeah. only going to improve. So if we, you know, now we know what to do, we know what sells, we can plan for that. So like now it's like the trajectory can go way up from, from where we're at. Um, we just have to plan and execute. Right? Yeah. Sitting here, it's easy for me to imagine next year, 
Mm -hmm. The farmer's market is going to double. We're going to do $40,000 on farmer's market because we're going to do twice as many farmer's markets. Mm -hmm. It's easy to imagine that our roadside stand sales will grow to $30,000 as we're getting more established. It's super easy to imagine the wholesale, which we haven't even really been doing, turning into a $20,000 part of our business when we actually give it some attention. You know, and then I bought all those, bought all my ornaments. We're having a $10,000 Christmas yeah. next year. And you know, those are not stretch goals. Yeah. And that's, that's a hundred grand. If we made minus $5,000, a bunch of you are probably wondering, how do we pay our bills? <laughs> Especially after we told you we made minus $35,000 the year before. And the answer to that is we have a second business. Look at me, look at me. <laughs> Has something to do with videos. And our next video, we're gonna break down those numbers. One category that had zero, which could have had a lot more, is online sales. And having a website would have probably really done that for us. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create your website. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content. Manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy-to-use platform. Or create a community with their powerful blogging tools or use Squarespace extensions to manage inventory, promote products, and streamline bookkeeping, or simply display posts from your social profiles. Honestly, the options feel limitless. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash you can't eat the grass to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Who knows? Having a website in 2023 might just be the thing that finally makes me profitable.